Nothing better than some Zach Bryan before you go to the gym. What is up? We are at Garage Gym in Little Silver, New Jersey. Everybody's been asking me about my leg workout specific to runners, and today I'm gonna show you. If you look over here, all kettlebell work. My leg workout is primarily single leg focused. Um, over the years, I learned that doing compound movements and using both legs when I lift does not help me with my imbalances for running. So I switched over to single leg work to help me become a better runner. And so far throughout this prep, I've seen that pay off in my training. Knock on wood, no injuries yet, and I feel stronger. So I'm gonna take you step by step through every workout that I do and show you what works for me. Hopefully it can work for you. I'm gonna start off with a warm up, and then we'll get into the meat and potatoes of the workout. Let's go. and kick it. All right, so warm up is done. I usually just do some band warm up, get the glutes activated, the hips activated, um, did some air squats and primed everything I'm about to work out. So now we're gonna start with lateral lunges. That works the adductors, actually helps with some hip mobility, and it's something I never did before, so it's very humbling. Now, be advised, a lot of these movements are new to me. So don't critique me too much. I don't criticize me too much. I will accept the critique if I'm doing anything wrong, but it's all a learning process for me. This is something completely new to me. So some things I'm still working on. My mobility is not anywhere near where it needs to be, but we are getting there. So like I said, lateral lunges first. I usually do three sets of 10 uh, for each side. So 10 and 10 and then uh, move on to the next one. So let's start that now. First exercise is done. Now, what's very important about this is putting your ego to the side. As you see, I'm going extremely light with all of these, most of these, because I'm focusing more on the technique and the form. I really don't care about the weight that I'm doing. I need to hit those muscles, I need to fix those imbalances, and weight really does not matter in the long run. You know, the strength will come. Technique is most important with everything. So move on to the next exercise. All right, next is a single leg. I really don't know what it's called. I think it's a single leg squat. You'll see what I do. But it targets glutes, quads, single. What's the word for that? It targets them individually. Individually, there we go. <laughs> so it's important to. When you, so you'll see I have one leg pitched back and the other one is where most of the, the focus is on. 
the biggest fault you'll see is people will put most of their weight on that back leg and it's important to just use that as like a balance a kickstand and lean a little bit more forward so you'll see what I'm doing when I do it and I'll feel it mostly in that it should be like a 90% 10% in the back leg so we'll start that right now that same thing about three sets of 10 both legs so 20 reps total and uh, work through that So even though I'm going lighter in most of these, I've actually seen the most growth in my legs. I guess maybe because I'm targeting muscles I've never targeted before. Like my old workouts used to be heavy back squats, um, like RDLs with a barbell, uh, leg extensions, leg curls, everything, like the leg press. But what happens with that is if my right leg wound up being weaker than my left, from the injury I had in the past. So what happens is your left or your stronger leg will do most of the work, building the strength, and then that right leg is kind of just hiding out because it's a double leg movement. This exposes every weakness you have and is quite humbling, I must say. So, I mean, kettlebells are a great way to expose all of that. I've done a ton of video watching research on kettlebell workouts and movements and there's a ton of things out there on them and I'm slowly converting most of my training to all kettlebell work in the uh, upper body I'm gonna do like a 90% kettlebell work and like 10% of like old school bodybuilding how I always do it so it's something new and I love finding something new that's gonna humble me and teach me something different so another theory of mine of why I switched to this style of lifting is because running is primarily a single leg movement. I mean, when you ever on two feet when you're running, you know, it's always one. So if your legs are not able to withstand that constant impact of it on its own, it's gonna lead to injury. And I learned that the hard way. And a good way to test it out is simply stand on one leg for 30 seconds and then on the other for 30 seconds. If you have trouble just standing on a flat ground for 30 seconds on one leg, it just shows right there you have an imbalance. You'll see one leg, you may be able to do it with less trouble than the other leg. And that'll tell you right there where your imbalances are. So keep that in mind when you are running and lifting. You wanna be more intentional with what you do. Have that intention behind your lifts and it'll correlate over to running. I have felt completely better and stronger this prep than I have in the past just by implementing these things. All right, so next movement. Something I learned recently, I've actually just started implementing these in. It's called an ATG split squat. I'm still learning how to do it. Um, I actually have to use help with, uh, if you look right here, on the floor. I do stacked plates because my ankle mobility is not 100%. But these work on your ankle mobility, quad strength. If you have knee pain, especially like runner's knee, these help with that as well. Um, You'll see how I do it. Uh, I've watched different videos on the form and technique, and like I said, I'm still perfecting it. Still perfecting it. Um, definitely not 100%, but I'm getting there. These, if you have to, start with no weight and just try it without weight, and you'll see it's very humbling. Um, it also helps with your hip flexor uh, mobility because you'll see that on one side you're stretching your hip flexor, which runners have weak and tight hip flexors because of the constant leg lifting um, and then the other side is strengthening your quad and working on the ankle mobility so here's how I do it if you know a better way to do it feel free to let me know critique uh, I'm always open to it so let's do it All right, 
gonna do the worst. Actually, there's something worse after this, but right now the worst. Step ups, uh, dual kettlebell step ups. Plenty of variations you could do it. You could do single, double, um, front rack people do. I'm just gonna do on the side like a farmer's carry. This works your glutes, glute need, quads. I've found that this really helps me like when I hit hills. So when I used to run, hills would absolutely crush me. I like to blow up and that's it. Since doing these, and really, oh, you'll see, they're, they're humbling for me at least. And I'm going lighter. Um, since doing these, I've definitely felt that that help on the incline when I'm running, especially on like speed days, marathon paces. These definitely help. So give these a shot. Uh, same thing, three sets of 10. Um, no need at this point to really go for like crazy heavy weight where you can only get five to six reps. I try to aim for that 10 to 12 rep range for the most part. Um, yeah, and uh, feel it. There's no need for anything else. When I do these, I do focus on, because it's easy to use that back leg, like when I step up, it's easy to use this back leg to push off. So I really try to focus on pushing off with the leg that's up. And then I really, like, there's a way to do it where you can step up and put both feet on, but I'm really trying to focus on just using the leg that's working and not having any help. So when I get up to the top, I kind of just let my other leg hover around and then I step back down. Um, I'm deep into prep right now. I mean, I'm not the strongest, but I'm feeling it right now. So I'm definitely gonna move down and wait because I don't want to sacrifice my form. These are 26s. Uh, I'm gonna use the 18s just so I can make sure I get the proper reps, proper form, and actually get the work that's, that I have the intention of getting. Heart rate, 100, no bueno. All right, um, if you, let's say, don't have a box that you could step up on, uh, variation of this could just be if you want two dumbbells in one hand just lunges you do walking lunges another way I like to do two I'll bounce back and forth single like this and I'll either do step back lunges or forward lunges uh, that's all preference and your skill level what you have access to um, but either way they all hit the same thing one more set of this and then on to the next. All right, so we have Bulgarian split squats right now. These are horrible, meaning I hate them, but they are actually so good for you. I'm gonna show you the proper setup for them to make sure that your feet are in the right spots. So you sit on the edge of a bench like this, have my feet right under me like I'm just sitting normal. Now I wanna do the work on the right leg first. So I bring that, foot, that front foot forward to where it could lay flat like this. Stand up. Now, this is the proper uh, distance of where your working leg is gonna be. I'm gonna put my back foot on the bench, but see how like when I stand up, you see that back foot? All the weight is still on my front foot and I'm just kind of like tapping the bench with my back foot. That's how much weight you want it to be on. You don't want to use equal distribution of both legs. You want to lean mostly forward. So this is the setup of where you want to be for a Bulgarian split squat. So when you go down with a Bulgarian split squat, you don't want to fall backward. You want to lean forward. So keep a slight Bend in your chest. 
Make sure you're feeling all the work in that front leg. these I have been doing Bulgarian split squats for a decent amount of time so I do go a little bit heavier with them um, dizzy right now uh, the reps usually aim for 10 although I may not always get it's very humbling but I'm good with going heavier on them because they're not really that new to me these are key these hit your glutes hamstrings, quads, amazing. And they jack the heart rate up. These should be a staple in everybody's leg workout, no matter what. Okay, the hardest part is done. Now, for the most part, these workouts will stay the same. I uh, usually will add in different variations. I'll switch out certain things like I explained with the step ups maybe I'll just do lunges in place um, but the whole idea is to target some of your quads hamstrings glutes get some hip mobility move in a lateral um, move in a lateral direction because we don't our hips are meant to move in more than just the frontal and reverse plane um, so I hit that, that was the first thing. Now we're gonna target very important parts of your leg for running. So we're gonna target the calves next and the anterior tibialis. So first thing is gonna be dual kettlebell standing calf raises. I'm gonna try to aim for about 15 and whatever I could get. I'm gonna drop and I'm gonna go, I'll hold on to something and I'm gonna do a burnout of body weight, single leg, standing calf raises. Three sets of basically whatever I can get. I really don't count. I wait for the burn and I go a little bit further than that. And uh, yeah, your, your calves can generally tolerate more reps because of the constant uh, impact that it has all day, every single day of just walking. So you want to make sure you're getting higher rep ranges to really stimulate it and give it some type of different stimulus that it's not used to, which is why I'll go from weighted to single leg body weight and uh, just change it up, try to shock the muscle a little bit. So key to calf raises is not to just go and bang out as many reps as quick as possible. Focus on like explode up and then a slow back down. So I'll just, Really focus on the tempo, like a three second tempo on the way down. One, two, three. And then explode up. So one second up, hold for about a second, and then three seconds down. All right, so the last exercise for calves. Um, we did standing, now we're gonna do seated. Biggest thing, biggest mistake I made was I had no idea there were two parts of the calf. I thought that seated and standing were basically the same thing and I found out that the standing really targets the gastro and seated targets the soleus, two different parts of the calf, both essential for some reason. So that's what the seated uh, targets. So the way you do this, one leg kicked back, the other one in front of you. Place the weight at the front of your knee, feel the weight on that leg. Don't assist in any way so I'm just gonna hold it just so that it doesn't fall but the weight is fully on my leg and then I'm gonna explode up feel it hold it slow back down explode up slow back down and then same thing same as the standing until I feel a burn and then push a little bit past that
calf raises are so essential because when your calves are strong, they're able to absorb impact when you're running better. So not so much of the stress falls on your tendons, ligaments, and bones. Your muscles are able to absorb it a lot better. All right, so next is tip raises. This muscle lines your tibia bone and hardly ever gets used. Well, when you're running, it gets used. But aside from that, you never really target it. Um, and when it's weak, that could lead to shin splints, stress fractures, etc. So I always finish off just with some tip raises. So I put kettlebell on the tip of my foot and go forward, pull back, squeeze, slight descend, descend. You'll see, especially from never using this muscle, it starts to burn very quickly. All right, so that is the completion of today's leg workout. Um, as I had mentioned uh, earlier in the video, I swapped things out. I'll add some things. I may do more on one day than I do on another. Now, at this point, I'm about three weeks out from the Houston Marathon. This is my last big week of training before the taper, so I am pulling back a little bit on the volume of leg workouts that I'm doing. Um, but those are core movements that you should always implement into your workouts, especially as a runner. Um, I see great results from it. I've been doing it now for the entirety of this prep and have, knock on wood again, had no issues that I've had in the past with shin splints or pain or recovery or during my runs being able to keep going. So it's definitely paid off. Um, I'll usually end the workout with some core. Um, that I could show in another video just now. Just wanted to highlight the leg workouts and the main movements that I do. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to reach out to me. If you have any recommendations that maybe I should add in or fix some type of technique or form in my lift, please let me know. Um, hope to keep having videos come out for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I will hopefully see you on the next one.